Last question was, how high will it go? We need to go back to our equate expression for the position as a function of time. And there it is. We're going to again fill in. We don't know how high it's going to go, but at that time, um, we're going to insert everything we can here, as including the time, and find out what that maximum y is. The initial y is 0 because we're starting out at the ground. This initial speed in the y direction is v naught sine theta. And the time that we're going to insert here is the time that we calculated at the very beginning, in other words, the time for when, by which the speed in the y direction goes to zero. That time turned out to be v naught sine theta over g. Notice there's no factor of two now. And then we're gonna have this last term in this expression plus one half minus g We're going to put that same time in v naught sine theta over g, but now we'll square it. So this equals v naught squared sine squared theta over g minus one half v naught squared sine squared theta. That's from squaring these two things. Now it should be divided by g squared, but it's going to be canceled by one of those g's. One of those g's will be canceled by the g up front. So I have that. And notice this thing is the same as that. I have a, a half, so I have something minus a half of something, which gives me this. And that's our answer for part C. There's something somewhat intuitive here. This is the height, the maximum height the ball is going to go in the y direction. Football players don't necessarily want the ball to go the highest, um, but if they did, uh, they can get it to go higher by kicking it at higher speed or by kicking it at an angle such that the sine goes to 1. When does that occur? At 90 degrees. In other words, they kick the ball straight up like this. If they kick it off at some angle, its trajectory looks like that. It won't go as high, even though they kick it at the same speed.